My name's Irene Doutney. I'm the Greens councillor from the City of Sydney Council and I thank the organisers for asking me to facilitate this meeting today. We'll be having some very interesting speakers and then we'll be going for a short march around the block. Okay, so firstly, I'd like to acknowledge that we're meeting on Aboriginal land, on Gadigal land, land that was never ceded, sold or given away. And I pay my respects to the elders past and present and any brothers and sisters that are here today. This is Aboriginal land, always was and always will be. We're here today to shout out to the coalition government a big no to any intended cuts and co-payments to our precious health system. A health system that is the envy of the world and which was built on the principles of equity and social justice. What we are facing today is a foretaste of things to come under this appalling coalition government. We knew it would be bad, but now we are seeing just where this government wants to take us. And that is backwards. Backwards to the elitist, elitist system of the past, where only the rich could afford proper health care and the working poor died young. If the Abbott government has it its way, we will end up with a dysfunctional two-tiered system like the United States. And we just have to remember what happened when they tried to introduce Obamacare, a communist plot. So this is the thinking we've got to think about. This must never happen here. Co-payments are a flag. They're proposed, they aren't introduced yet, but they're a flag for the future demise of our more equitable health system. And although $6 doesn't sound like much to the well-off, but will have an effect on the working poor, low-income earners, casual workers, working mothers, the elderly, and those with chronic health problems who can't afford to go on public benefits. Research by Professor Gover in South Australia has shown that across Australia over 14% of people are under-servicing Medicare services and they're the low-income people who will be affected by any introduction of co-payments. It is also worth remembering that there is a Medicare local review also going on, being um, overseen by one of Howard's appointees from the, um, from the past and that will report back in March and we don't know what that's going to do to the Medicare system. Yesterday I asked my GP what he thought of co-payments and he was scathing in his opinion of the whole exercise. Apart from the obvious inequity, he believed that payments would only cost. They'd cost doctors administration fees. They would achieve nothing for either doctors or patients. What is even more perverse is the, is the suggestion to extend this co-payments to emergency services as well, to try and discourage patients from resorting to hospital services when they can't afford the doctor's co-payments. Barnes report predicts a 3% decline in GP visits if this is introduced, but it must be acknowledged that this will lead to an increase in the need for ambulance services and for emergency ward services. The whole idea is stupid repudiation of a social system built up over a hundred years by the labour movement and by the social justice activists and reformers. It's a stupid exercise that just shows how out of touch with the community the Abbott government really is and his razor gang. In a country that is rapidly becoming unaffordable for ordinary people, I mean, just have to look at the rise in housing prices in Sydney. 14% in one year. How unaffordable is that? Any move against the affordability of health care is unforgivable and highlights the battles we will face in the future as this government moves to dismantle our social services in the name of this mysterious budget deficit. We have seen, Ab seen Abbott's austerity measures threaten our hard-fought social justice system. And we just have to look at the attacks on legal services, particularly on Aboriginal legal services, for the most jailed people in Australia. 
that we have to look at the cutting back of the funding for climate change departments when we have just experienced the hottest year in history. Then we have to look at the fact there's no housing minister when housing affordability is a huge problem across the country. There are cuts to the CSIRO, to TAFE, a review of the ABC and the list just goes on. Abbott's mean-spirited austerity philosophy is leading Australia down a path to become the unlucky country, eating away at our social infrastructure and our safety net system. Governments are elected to provide services to the community. It is meant to provide conditions for a healthy, productive and peaceful society. It is there to create a just and fair state that governs for the good of everybody, not just for the good of the economy. Abbott's rule by reviews will see all social services face cuts by these razor gangs and the rejection of policies made to make society more equitable, such as the mining tax and a price on carbon, are cut and dumped. So what the government must do is increase funding to hospitals to improve the health service, universal health, edu health services for everybody, not for the elite. And now I'd like to introduce some of our fantastic speakers. So firstly, we have Sally McManus, a tireless activist, Secretary of the Australian Services Union of New South Wales and a ACT. Sally. Thank you. Medicare is the principle and the promise of universal health care for all. It's something that was fought for and won by the union movement, by working people, the labour movement of Australia. It's uniquely Australian. It's the most effective um, universal health care system in the world. Ever since the labour movement started to try and achieve universal health care, the Conservatives and the rich and powerful in Australia have fought to wind back or to stop its introduction. This started in 1949 when Chifley first tried to nationalise healthcare services. It was fought for viciously at the time by the rich, and that was doctors. They did not want that service. They took a high, co they took a high court challenge and they won. But ever since then, the union movement, workers have continued to fight for, to win this for all Australians. And it was in when Whitlam got elected in the early 70s when Medibank Private was first introduced and we first had the major breakthrough. This was opposed tooth and nail by the Liberal Party at the time. And then when Fraser came into government, what did they do? Well, first of all, they tried to get rid of Medibank Private. That was one of the first things. And this led to one of the only um, national strikes, general strikes in this country in 1970. Um, six to defend um, Medibank Private, uh, to defend these gains that we'd made. And eventually, in 1984, we won what we'd been fighting for, and that's the Medicare that we have today, introduced by Bob Hawke. And this was a demand... This is a demand of the trade union movement. The trade union movement gave up, all workers gave up pay increases in order to win Medi Me uh, Medicare. We did that and we fought for it for everyone, whether you work or whether you don't work. And what is Abbott doing? Are we that surprised that one of the first things he tries to do is flies a kite about undermining Medicare? Now the co-payment, the co-payment, let's be clear about this. It is breaking that principle of universal free health care. That is what he's trying to do because he knows it's very popular. It's popular whether you're a working class, whether you're middle class or whether you're ruling class, it's quite popular. And so he wants to break that nexus, break that principle, and it's a wedge to try and move towards eventually what the private health funds are demanding, which is an American-style, privatised, free market health um, care system because there's a tonne of money to be made out of it. This is, this is what they've always believed and this is what they're continuing to fight for. Now let's just look at what he did. What did he do? The day before Christmas, when all bad decisions get made, he introduced a 6.2% increase to private health funds. 6.2%. And you think about how much the private um, health industry is subsidised by the taxpayer in this country. 
Holden would not dare ask for the amount of money that they receive for their profits. And so uh, it is those same people that are now demanding these changes as they see this is a way towards achieving, making massive profits out of um, our health care. We cannot let this happen. We cannot, this generation cannot let this happen. This system was built by our grandparents and our parents. And it must be us that stands and fights just as everyone has done before to defend Medicare, defend the principle and the promise of universal health care for all. Thank you, Sally, for those words. And now we keep on the fight and I am very proud to introduce the acting leader of the Australian Greens, Senator Richard Di Natale, a GP from a former life, who's going to come and speak to us now. Richard. Thanks very much and thank you to all of you for coming along because you're here today for one reason and one reason only. You're here to protect and defend what is one of this country's greatest institutions. And what we're witnessing here at the moment is one of the biggest attacks on Medicare since it was developed in the late 1980s. Make no mistake, this goes straight to the heart of what Medicare is about. Because Medicare is based on the principle of universality. What that means is it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, it doesn't matter if you're unlucky enough to be born with a genetic disease, if you've got a couple of kids with asthma, if you develop a kidney infection later in life, if you've got diabetes and you know, need to go and visit the ophthalmologist, the kidney specialist, the optometrist, it doesn't matter because we've got a health system that will look after you. And the Abbott government is trying to tear it down. This is an attack on Medicare. And why is the Abbott government trying to tear it down? You're going to hear a lot about the health system being unsustainable, unaffordable, and it's nonsense. This is ideology, pure and simple. This is a government that has never supported universal health care and will do everything they can to tear it down. Just look at how much we spend on health care in this country. You'll hear about how costs are spiralling out of control. We spend about 9% of our GDP on health care. You look at where, at where Abbott and co are trying to take us, to the US system, a two-tiered system where one level of health care is provided to those who can afford it, and it's a good level of health care, and a second-rate level, or no health care at all, for those people who can't afford it. And they spend twice what we do as a proportion of their GDP, GDP on health. They spend about 18%. It's unfair, inefficient, unaffordable and stupid to go down the US track. So don't believe for a moment that we can't afford to look after ordinary Australian citizens who need health care. We can and we should. Costs aren't spiralling out of control. After all, what is the point of economic growth if we can't spend money on health care? Why should we grow our budget if we can't spend money on the things in life that matter? So our health system is sustainable, it's affordable and it's efficient. But Tony Abbott's scheme for co-payments, it'll have an impact, just not the impact that Tony Abbott and Minister Dutton think it will. Some people will decide to go to a doctor and some of them won't need to go to a doctor. That's true. But the cost... The cost is the young child at home with uncontrolled asthma who's been to the doctors three times that week, who's been to the pharmacist to get their asthma medication, who's struggling to pay the bills, might not go that next time and find themselves in an ambulance in intensive care because they didn't see their GP. That's the cost. Or the man at home who's got chest pain and he's again struggling and decides maybe it's just a pulled muscle. Three days later, he's in an ambulance having a heart attack and on life support. That's the cost of co-payments. And that's where this government is taking us. That's where this government is taking us. Now, we have an opportunity. The door is always open. We will talk to Minister Dutton and to Tony Abbott about where savings can be made and revenues can be increased. Why should we be giving 
the big end of town, the fossil fuel lobby, billions of dollars in subsidies. Why should we be doing that? Why should we be tearing down the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, which is saving the planet and making money? Why should we do that? Why are we deciding to balance the books on the health of the most vulnerable Australians? And it's those people whose health is worse, those people on low incomes, who will be the ones who decide not to visit their doctor. So this is an attack on vulnerable Australians and it needs to be stopped. Of course there's some areas in healthcare we can look at. We should be investing more in looking after people in the community rather than sending people to hospital where they're more likely to get even sicker in some instances and where their care is going to be much more expensive. We should look at the PBS and look at ways of making our drugs even more affordable and cheaper to the taxpayer. We could look at health technologies and look at some of the things that we're funding at the moment that aren't based on good evidence. There are many areas where we can make more efficiencies in the health system and improve the patient experience, but instead this government is intent on fighting a 30-year-old ideological battle using the guise of balancing the books, sacrificing the health care of ordinary Australians. Why? Because it's never supported Medicare, it still doesn't, and it wants to tear it down. Well, you're here today because you want to build it up. We want to build up Medicare, we don't want to tear it down. And today starts that campaign, not to tear down Medicare, but to build it up, to defend it, and to extend it. Thank you, Richard, for those inspiring words. And it's now my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Councillor Linda Scott. Labor Councillor Linda Scott. Thanks, Irene. Well, in 2007, when John Howard was worried he was going to lose the federal election, do you remember those billboards he put up? He put up those billboards and he said to the Australian people, if you change the government, you change the country. Well, wasn't he right on that? My friend and colleague, Tanya Plibersek, who for the last term of our federal parliament was Australia's health minister, sat in our parliament, and do you know how many questions she got from the Liberal Party? Do you know how many questions she got as Australia's health minister from Peter Dutton, our shadow minister? How many do you think that she got? She got none. She got not a single question from the Liberals about what Labor's vision was for healthcare. So we got on and did it. Labor got on and delivered with the Labor legacy that was, that was Bob Hawke starting Medicare. We got on and delivered the Labor legacy for health in the face of silence from the Liberal opposition. And now that we're elected, we know what they were doing. We know that they were sitting on that front bench. We know that they were holed up in their offices in Parliament House setting out their plans to destroy Medicare. That is what they're trying to do with this co-payment system. As a councillor on the City of Sydney, we see the people who this is going to hit the hardest. We fund a lot of this state's homelessness services. We fund a lot of the community centres that these people will have to come to when they can't afford a co-payment to go and see their GP. This decision, if it is made, to introduce co-payment for Medicare will shift costs onto New South Wales councils. It will shift costs onto a New South Wales state government. It will shi shift costs onto all of you. I don't want to see an Australia where my children and your children and the future generations don't have universal health care. And so let's today, let's today send a very clear message to Mr Abbott and his Liberal colleagues. Do you want to see the destruction of Medicare? No. Do you want to see a system where you have to pay to go to the doctor that taxes those who can afford it the least? No. No, Mr Abbott, no. Thanks for coming along today. Thank you, Linda. A quick, a quick chant. Get sick, go broke, Tony Abbott, what a joke. Get sick, go broke, Tony Abbott, what a joke. Get sick, go broke, Tony Abbott, what a joke. Okay.
say we've now got Annie Butler from the Nurses and Midwives Association. Thanks very much, Irene, and thank you all for coming to save Medicare. Now, the Nurses and Midwives Association is the union that represents all nurses and midwives wherever they work in New South Wales. Our members deal with people at virtually every point of access in the healthcare system. In the lead up to the recent federal election, our union was so concerned about a then future coalition government's plans for healthcare that we made a TV commercial which tried to warn voters that a Tony Abbott-led government would take us down the path of the American healthcare system. This action upset a lot of people. We were accused of scaremongering. We were branded as liars because we dared to say such a thing. But we are barely past the first 100 days of the Abbott federal government and the proposals to erode our health system have begun. Nurses and midwives believe that governments elected by us for that purpose have a responsibility to look after the health of all citizens. We believe that equitable access to quality health care, regardless of income or postcode, is our right and not a privilege. We are a very wealthy country and we can afford it. We're not suggesting that governments shouldn't seek to manage health costs responsibly. But we are suggesting that proposals to attack Medicare are both irresponsible and wrong. <laughs> Nurses and midwives do not agree with the tax on med Medicare. They do not agree with shifting the burden of, in of increasing health care costs onto those who can least afford it. There is no evidence that a co-payment for GPs or emergency departments will control costs effectively or that it will improve health outcomes. In fact, there is a lot of evidence, as others have said, to suggest that it is most likely to have the opposite effect, that it will lead to worsening of chronic illnesses, more hospital admissions, and increased mortality. Now, nurses and midwives understand these consequences probably better than anyone else. Nurses and midwives are the ones who cope with the overcrowded emergency departments the overflowing wards, the increasingly sick at home in the community, and they are constantly being asked to do more with less because of budget obsession. Yeah. We must remember that we have one of the be best healthcare systems in the world and we can afford it. And we can continue to afford it, but not by forcing, pens forcing pensioners, the vulnerable, and the less fortunate to dig deeper. That is not the Australian way. We can afford to keep our health system as one of the best in the world by using our funds in the best way and by asking those who have the most to give just a little more. We need to make sure that preventative health services such as GPs and primary health care are properly funded and available to all. And we need to look at where we are spending our health and tax dollars. As taxpayers, we fund the health system. We should get to say where the money is spent. <laughs> now, as Sally said, the proposed co-payment would apparently save $750 million. This seems like a lot of money. But the federal government currently gives more than $5 billion every year to health funds to subsidise health insurance, or insurance premiums and they have just agreed to let insurance companies increase their premiums by another 6%. The maths seems simple to me. There's plenty of savings there. Nurses and midwives have another idea that could work to ensure the sustainability of our healthcare system. It's called a financial transactions tax. Now this is not a tax on ordinary people. This is where those who deal in the speculative economy, now we're talking about the people who are largely responsible for the global financial crisis, would pay a 0.05% tax on transactions which reap them massive individual wealth. 
The tax would be almost insignificant to their overall wealth, but would result in billions of dollars in tax revenue. We can tell you more about it later. We Australians pride ourselves on fairness and equity, yet we don't contribute fairly. Our governments allow the extremely wealthy to become even wealthier and expect the ordinary person to pick up the tab when the money runs out. So, Tony Abbott, the nurses and midwives of New South Wales demand that you hear us when we say we can fund Medicare properly. We can keep our health system as one of the best in the world if we make the right changes. So we are asking Mr Abbott to have the courage to do it. Do it and do it now and stand up for all the people you serve because New South Wales nurses and midwives say Medicare is not for sale. Thank you so much, Annie, for that inspiring, those inspiring words for those people who work on the front line and see exactly what will happen when these things come to pass. And now, finally, we've got Sarah Garnham, National Education Officer of the National Union of Students. And after, after Sarah's spoken, we'll march. All right, hi, everyone. So I'm here as the National Union of Students Education Officer and also as a member of Socialist Alternative. Um, I'm happy to say that it was Socialist Alternative and also uh, many of the young Greens here in the crowd who organised this rally, uh, who organised a SNAP emergency rally in response to the announcement um, that Abbott made of these attacks on Medicare. So it's excellent to see such a great turnout, so many representatives um, here today. Um, I was at a similar rally, sort of similar, a rally against um, Tony Abbott uh, last year in Melbourne and it was actually a, a rally against a dinner that he was attending, a dinner for him and his rich friends. Uh, tickets were over $1,000 a head. Uh, the dinner was attended by Gina Reinhart, Rupert Murdoch, etc, etc. We had a very successful demonstration at this dinner. Um, but uh, when I went home that night to see if there was any media coverage of our demonstration, predictably there wasn't. There was, however, a picture of Tony Abbott, and I was reminded of it uh, the other day, a picture of Tony Abbott literally kneeling at the feet of Rupert Murdoch, making it entirely clear that he is slave to his master in his wormy, snivelly, creepy way sitting there basically saying for all the world to see that he will do whatever the rich and powerful in this country demand of him. That is what the Liberal Party represent. They want to look after their friends in North Shore. They want to look after the Gina Reinhardts of the world. They want to look after the rich. It's what, they've, what they represent now and what they've always represented and it's what this attack on Medicare represents. And the flip side of that is that they always want to attack us. They always want to attack workers. They always want to attack single mothers. They want to attack students. They want to attack refugees. They want to attack Aboriginal people. And most of all, they want to attack unions. And I think, and I think in the fight that we now have against this attack on Medicare, against the introduction of this fee, we have to be clear that Medicare wasn't the Labor Party's baby. It was the fight and project of the union movement in this country. It was the unions that got us Medicare. It was the unions, it was the unions in 1976 that held massive strikes across Australia, a huge one in Wollongong, a general strike in 1976 to defend Medicare against the Fraser government's attacks. And now we have that fight on our hands again. It has to be a union fight. It has to be a left fight. And I think, I think we have to see that this fee that they're introducing, while it's heinous and disgusting and will mean that many students uh, who I represent and many workers uh, will not be able to go to the doctor, will be deterred from going to the doctor, it also is just the thin edge of the wedge. It is just a signal of what is to come. And if we look around the world, if we look around the world at capitalism in crisis, healthcare, public education and welfare payments are being slashed everywhere. In response to the capitalist crisis, governments of every single shade have not said we will cut into our military budget, have not said we will raise taxes on the rich, they have said we will go
go out there and screw the poor into the ground. And that's what Abbott wants to be part of in this country. So we need to be prepared to stand up and fight with all our might. And, and uh, I'm, I'm someone that's been involved in organising protests uh, last year and hopefully into uh, this year as well against the massive cuts to education funding that came through from the Labor government and have been continued by the Liberal Party, obviously, uh, the students are staring down now. And I think we have to see that these funding cuts to education are one and the same as cuts to healthcare. And the fight is one and the same. And students and workers and all people that want to defend basic public services need to stand up together this year to be part of all of these rallies, all of these fights as one hand. Thank you very much. All right, so I believe we're going to march now. Um, maybe just before we do that, we should start a chant going. Um, so when they say warfare, we say... When they say cut back, we say... When they say warfare, we say welfare. When they say cut back, we say warfare. Cut back. All right, we can work on that in the march. Twenty of it, listen up. We don't want your fees and cuts. Twenty of it, listen up. We don't want your fees and cuts. Twenty of it, listen up. We don't want your fees and cuts. No ifs, no buts, no Medicare cuts. 